Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, Nigel here with you. Uh, so now we've got part six of this uh, build of this lovely Chieftain Mark 10 from Meng, or Ming, however you're supposed to say it. TSO51 is the kit number, thoroughly recommend it, it is lovely. So, uh, part six now, doing this the next day, so this is like 24 hours ago since I finished part five, and I've done a bit of work off camera so as not to bore you with it. Um, so, you can see here we've got this, this box this piece on the side so that's gone on there that's going to sort of fit in there somewhere like that around that and that sort of thing there so that won't really be seeing much but uh, I also put some super glue in there because it had a sort of undercut in it so dealt with that I finally glued the barrel together so that can be left to dry fits together really really nicely take your time get it all nicely together and then you'll have less work to do with the sanding so as far as the fenders go, or the mud guards, I have done all the ejector pin marks in the bottom as I said I would and I've also gone round and filled in all the, all the slots where these rear guards here went on uh, and then you had the, the front light here and you had these supports here, these outriggers, so that's all filled. So they're all nice and smooth now, so if I decide to leave it with the mud guard, the, the, the side fenders off or indeed put magnets on them, whatever, then that's all going to look lovely. Um, done the lights, so what I've done, as I said I do, I put some um, <clears throat> masking fluid over the lens and then painted the whole light silver so that when you look at the light it looks silver. Now when I go over it with black, what I'll do is I'll put some mask oil on the light lens and then prime it with black and then paint the proper colours and then right at the end we'll take the mask oil off and then you'll have that bright light and you can probably just about see that. The camera's actually putting a square around it so it can see and it's focusing on it. But, um, you can see that even if I put my hand behind it makes no difference whatsoever because the clear part is now completely covered in silver paint. Done the same on the tail lights here and then I've put a drop of the clear red on there. Again we'll mask that and then when we spray it all black the red will look like the bright red that it does there. Same on this one. See the back light there and you can see the front light. There, so that's all done. This part here, that part is, what's that, 2.5 millimetre square? That part there is 2.5 millimetre square and I had it in my clips to hold it to paint and it went ping, <laughs> right? And I heard the clip go snap as it went ping and I heard it hit the ceiling and it came down and it hit my shoulder, okay? And then I didn't know where it had gone. So I did the sock over the vacuum, couldn't find it. Then I got the vacuum out with the, with the you know, without a bag with the plastic bin in it. Vacuumed up the whole room, couldn't find it. And I must have spent two hours looking for it and I eventually found it. And it was, I've got this sort of, this, this desk that I'm on has these flat legs that sort of sit on pads. And there's like a gap you can get your finger under, it was under there. Couldn't believe it. And it was lucky that I had the mask on because it was bright green so I could spot it against the beige carpet. But... Here we are, so um, found that and got it glued in. And again, that's all painted silver, the same. Fitted these little strips of photo etch on here, which are the, the rubber gaiters or clamping strips. Did the same as in on the back of there. Just went around with a cotton bud and then in with a knife, got a nice round, one of these uh, number 10, that tell you, that's a number 10 blade. And just go along the edge and just remove the excess super glue so you get a nice clean sharp edge on there. So that's the way to go with that one. And as you can see, if you remember, I had those horrible plastic arms. I have put them back in here. I had these horrible plastic arms on there with this like step in the back of them, you can see there. Really weird. So made up some brass ones some, some, from some 0.5 brass rod. That was the literally, I've literally got about five millimeters left. So I ordered another pack on eBay today. Um, but yeah, made those up with the brass. So they're on there now and they look a lot more realistic than having the big thick plastic ones on there and like I say every single picture I've got in the reference books that the uh, lovely Phil sent me for this for the chieftain I almost said centurion then for the chieftain every single one it's like that or with nothing there at all so if you haven't got any brass you don't want to make them just cut the plastic off drill a hole in the end because that's also accurate so there we are uh, I also painted this area in here silver, you can see on the on the tail, on the little uh, rear reflector there, or it might be some sort of indicator, and then painted those lenses orange, as you can see. So they'll just, I think they're just going to press fit in there and stay there. We shall see. Um, 
In fact, I'll try that now on camera, live, for your delectation. Let's see how they go. I'll make sure you get them the right way round. I want the orange paint inwards because they do have a slight taper on them. So get that in there and I've just dropped it. So that is orange paint inwards. So we'll place that on there. And then press it in. Now then is that going to stay there on its own? Sure looks like it doesn't it? I might put a little wash of um, a watered down crystal clear on there. That'll just sort of form a skin over it. So we need to flip that one over. It's gone over. And then we can drop that into there. And just press it in. It does actually look like they're going to stay in there, you know. And there we go. That's going in. So I think what I'll do is I'll just put a skin of um, I think I'll put a skin of um, water down crystal clear on there. And that'll just go around the side and sort of form a little seal just to hold it in. In fact, I'll do that now so you can see how I do it. Get some crystal clear. Where's my crystal clear? There it is. Grab an upturned Tammy a pot. Grab a drop of water. So we'll literally have a drop of water and then a cocktail stick, we'll get some crystal clear. And just thin that down with a drop of water as you can see there. You've got this very thin glue. Then we'll just paint that on there like so. like that. Do the same on this one. Leave it there for a couple of, well, just just a minute or so. Nothing really much at all. Get rid of that off the bottom of that Tamiya pot, so that's gone. And then literally after a couple of minutes I'm just going to come on the cotton bud and soak up the excess. And there we go. So that will have gone into the capillary into the edges and it'll sort of form a, a little seal in there. But I don't want to leave the clear on there because I need to mask over it. I'm not sure how resilient it is. I'm gonna put one of my little um put these fantastic little discs. These things here, you get these from premium hobbies. Circle masking, they're from High Q Parts. That's the large, that's 4.8 to 6 mil. This is the. Do, 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 that's something completely different. This is the extra large. Um, extra large, 6.2 to 7.6 mil. And then this is the small, that's 1 mil to 2.8. And this is the medium, which is 3 to 4.6. So I'll be using probably one of those on there. That's probably about 2.2. You can see on there, it's probably about 2.2. We'll measure them up, get that on there, and uh, and they can stay on there for the duration of the build. And uh, probably put them on later, I won't put them on now, because if I make a mistake and pull it off, I'll probably pull the light out with it. But there we go, so that's them stuck in. So as you can see, we've got like a really nice rear end starting to come together there, and uh, all the headlights on that are looking good. So I'm tempted to sort of do the the masking now, with this with the masking over these lenses here, the red ones, it's going to be a lot easier to do it like this rather than having a whole great big tank to hold because it's got to be pretty precisely put in there so um wish me luck i'll get that done in fact i'll do it now so what we'll do is get our masking fluid out this is the mr masking soul r i like this stuff a lot um, there's two different ones i prefer this one to the other one um it seems to come off easier I'm just going to get a, literally a drop. I need a, 
it's not so much having a small amount you need a you need something on here that's going to drop off there we go let's put that back in there so I want to drop like that you can see that when I hold it down it's going to drop off so I'm going to put that on there hopefully you can see what I'm doing and the capillary action will pull it off of the cocktail stick you can see it's starting to go but it's gone off to one side that's no good right Let's see if I can get that drop to come down again this is so difficult to do on camera guys no it's not going to work I'm going to have to do this under my magnifier because I can't bloody see what I'm doing yeah the it started to set If you're an experienced modeler you know all this but a lot of people that watch my channel aren't experienced modelers and like to they like to learn stuff what I'm trying to do is just get this to drop down onto that light come on I'm gonna do this off camera because you're gonna be bored to death but just basically it's just like get a drop to just drop down on there and just a minimum amount and it'll run around and stay there so that's what I'm gonna do off camera under a magnifier right soon okay, all done very difficult to do um, because they're, as you can see, if you can see it close up, it's like a dome. Um, so you can't really use a round mask because it'll just keep lifting up on the edges. But I've basically put it in there and then gone round with a sharp point, try and get it off the outer, outer edges. I think I've done all right. We'll see how it looks. Uh, at the end of the day, if we have to, we can always just touch it up, put a wash in there, whatever, put some dust over it. Um, it's a bit of AFVs. And then the front ones, and I've done the same. See, gone over the mask. I also had to use the masking fluid on these orange lights or reflectors, wherever they are, because um, they're 2.1 millimeters. And these masks, as good as they are, they go in 0.2 millimeters depth. So, two meter, I mean, it's too small, and two millimeter, 2.2 was too big. So, uh, probably could have used the 2.2 and then just dry brush some of the white paint on there after. I think it's all white back here. But, um, is it white or gray? It's white. In fact, it looks like the brown. Not sure what that is there, that brown. Looks like it's got some brown on it as well on the rear corner. Yes, there, look, you can see. So we've got brown going around there as well. So, uh, yeah, looks like the frame is grey though. So anyway, um, that's that enough waffling. So what we're going to do now, We, I suppose we could go on and fit these fenders, couldn't we? Um, I did actually have a little play earlier, and the way you have to put them on is hook them in from behind. Because if you try and put them on like this, just go straight on, this here won't go over the gearbox. So if you hook that around the gearbox like that, or the final drive should I say, and that's going to go, there's some square holes, and some square lugs on the actual itself you can see there and you flip it over that's got to go around there and that's going to go into there like that so all in all as expected it's a wonderful fit it's very very nice indeed so I think the way to do this is work from the back forwards just get those there glued in and once that's in solid then we can play with the front or we could start with the front um, yeah I think I'd rather start with the rear yeah very nice indeed let me get the other one on like that so there we go very nice indeed so I'm not going to do that on camera because it's going to be as boring as hell to watch so what I'll do is I'll just get these glued up what I'll do, I'll start off with the uh, quick drying extra thin, 
just tack them in and get these two tab locations on the back sorted and probably get a couple of pegs or something on there to hold it all in place if I can check I'm not going to break anything and that works doesn't it so I'll get it done and then I'll come back when I've done that little bit of tacking okay so I've got this glued sort of up to here and I've left the front loose the reason I've done that is because as you can see this mud guard is sort of hanging down on an angle and it wants to be sort of more like this so what I'm going to try and do is get this one on the same and then I should be able to put a clamp across and pull them up together so um I'll show you how I did this I ended up not using any clamps just get this into place it's all a bit fiddly but it does work and it works very very well so what I've done I've got my extra thin quick setting this is the for the newer modelers out there, this is the the one with the lighter green front on it here you can see there where my finger is pointing it's Tamiya extra thin quick setting it's not as strong as Tamiya glue but it it's very hot and it works very very fast which in my opinion makes it not as strong because it doesn't allow the the chemical reaction of the molten plastic and the glue to work together for as long so I think it it's not as strong certainly I've, sh I've shown on many occasions where you've got moving parts if you use the extra thin quick setting if any glue gets on the moving parts you can easily break them away again so just hold that in place the reason I'm not clamping is because when you clamp it's sort of pulling it up so um because it's not a square sided hull it's sort of at an angle the clamp goes like this so it kind of pulls it up so that's enough to hold that and I just leave that for a few minutes and then what I'm going to do is come in the back here just put some cement in there let it capillary into the gap and then try and sort of clamp that in Just like so. And as you can see, it will all just come together now in the end. So what I'll do is put some more cement in from this side. Just let it run in. So we close up that gap there. Remember any glue marks said the toolboxes are going to cover them so don't worry about it too much. But hopefully now you can see why I haven't fitted the toolbox so I can paint it a lot easier rather than going up and down and up and down. So there we are, this is all going together very very nicely indeed. It's a bit tricky but uh, it does work. So what we're going to do now is just literally hold this in against that tab there just get some extra thin onto that tab the quick setting again just kind of hold that in place and it will work itself out there we are and I think what I'm going to do here is just grab all my clamps and gently no I'm not because they're not big enough darn it that's a shame maybe I should make some L-shaped legs that come out hmm I can do it like this. I just want to keep that in. I don't want to sort of twist it about at all. I'm sure that'll be fine. Right, so I'm going to leave that like that and take Jess for a walk. See you later. So we got there in the end. I found this big old plastic thing that came with one of those. 
I don't think you can still get them. Years ago, you used to get these wooden boxes, like this sort of size. In fact, I've got one here with bits and pieces in. Wooden box about this size with a lid and it had a plastic insert. It had like knives and blades and clamps and all that sort of thing. That's what that is, one of those. And um, that reaches around there. And I've got them clamped. And if you look, I've got them just beyond vertical. Uh, horizontal, sorry. Hopefully what it does is they're going to spring back a bit. So that's what I was thinking. Um, so we shall see when it dries. And I've got it glued up. I've got it glued up all the way along here, down both sides, here, here, all the mounts up underneath there, everywhere. I've got it glued wherever I can to make it nice and solid. It's got quite a lot of pressure holding it there. So uh, I don't really want it to go cracking. Hopefully it'll sort of get used to being in that position. and It'll stay there, but um, get it welded well in. It should be okay. So um, I'm going to leave that for at least 10, 12 hours to dry. And I was thinking with these, I could actually extend them, couldn't I? Just get some longer four millimeter bar and make them make them bigger. But they're very difficult to get apart. So I think what I'll do is I'll order some four millimeter bar and then I'll take them apart with pliers and damage them and then reassemble them with new rods. So that'll be cool. Um, there we go. These are a bit, a bit longer, a bit more cumbersome, but I could perhaps do one at sort of that long and then one at that long and then have the other two just standard. We shall see. Anyway, right. Um, I've just seen a message as well that was left for me on my um, Apache bill, which was very nice, very kind gentleman. Said I'm an ainly retentive parasite. Never been called that before. So I replied, thank you very much. <laughs> right. I'll see you in a minute. OK, so <clears throat> 24 hours later, well, about 20 hours later, and I removed the clamp and everything stayed in place. Nothing cracked or anything. And the fenders have shrugged back a bit, but not completely horizontal. So just have to leave them like that, really. I'm not going to start trying to pull them down because I'll probably break one of the joints. But you can see there, it's just a tiny, just a tiny bit lifted up. I mean, we could perhaps try and just put, I don't, I don't know. It's probably going to break the glue joints. So I'd rather just leave them like that, to be honest. Um, so we're actually starting to look a bit like a tank now, aren't we? So now we've got to seriously start looking at what we're going to add and what we're going to leave off um, to get this Berlin camo done. Uh, because, I mean, you can already see we've got lots of bumps and bits and pieces and we don't want to be having to mask over that and uh, give ourselves problems. What I want to do now is just to continue with the build. We've got these boxes on the back. Now here we have an option of adding this first aid box or not because um, you can draw the holes out or not if you want to add it. Every picture I've got of a Berlin Camo Chieftain has that first aid box so I'm going to fit it. Um, we have a decal for it as well or a decal. So what I need to do is get all these parts off the sprue and get these boxes built up. And as you can see you've got one here which is this is this one without the first aid box, but we're going to add the first aid box. We're obviously not going to add this cable yet. I've already added that part there because if you remember, when I removed this ring from the sprue, you had two parts, which was that one and another part. What was it? It was the part that goes on the side of the toolbox here. Um, there, D3. So D3 and D2 were in the middle of that ring, so I didn't want to lose them. So I've already glued them on. So that one's there. And you've, you've seen a few seconds ago, you saw the, the part attached to the side of the toolbox, which is in one of my takeaway containers. So, um, all looking good. So, I'm going to get these parts off the sprue, and then we'll look at getting these boxes built up. And then I reckon we're going to be starting looking at, looking at starting on the turret, I think, because uh, we don't really want to be adding too much more on here. So, um, get those parts off, I'll be right Okay, so we've got the pieces off. All the pieces are the same for both sides, except for the base. So you've got D27 and D26. So um, yeah, up here I was a bit confused. I thought this was this was this side and that was that side, but no, it's basically, I didn't see this down here because I'm stupid. Uh, this is without the first aid box and that's with the first aid box. That's the difference. So um, <clears throat> I've drilled those holes in B6 as per the instructions. So we can take this part here, D27, seven, marked a six on that one, a seven on this one. So D27 goes that way up. And then this part here, B25, is going to sit on there like so. So it's all going to be a bit gappy, I think. So just get some quick setting in there and some quick setting in there. 
and then I'm going to put it down on the base and just push it just to make sure it's nice and level on the sides. So that's cool. Just like that. And then this side here, B6, is going to go into there. So we'll put some cement. To those gaps and glue that in. Let that capillary into the corners. Beautiful fit. And then we've got the other side here which is going to go on there. I mean, look at the fit, it's, it's wonderful. And there we are, that's gone together. That's lovely. Right. And now this first aid box is going on the side and it's going that way round. That's going to the what I should have done was glued this in before, shouldn't I? I should have um put this on so I could glue it in from the back. Never mind. Come on there now. We've got little legs on there for it to sit on. Just get some glue into them. There we go. There we are. I think we might need a spot on Mr. Surfacer on that back face because it's uh it's not looking good. It's got a sprue nib in it, and then that is gonna in turn go into we have a hole and a square hole. That's going to sit in there like that. But I'm not going to fit it yet because I want to paint it all first. So that's lovely. So I'll build up the other one and then I'll come back and see what we're going to do next. I have some great news, guys. Today is the 14th of July 2023 and I've just had an email from Hallants to say that my Edward Scammel PE set is in. So we can get back on that soon. So that'll be cool. Um, that could have been part of this group build as well, couldn't it? So, uh, we've got the, moving on through the instructions, we've got the suspension, which we've already done. We've got the tracks, which we've already done. Putting the side skirts on, which I'm not going to do. I'm not even going to take them off the sprue, there's no point. And then we're on to the turret. So, we can get these two parts of the turret together, and I think then we could perhaps call it a day. Um, so, yeah, I'll get these off, get them cleaned up. And we'll see how they go together. So we've got the turret parts all cleaned up, off their sprues and everything, so that's all done. Uh, now, I thought before we actually get this glued together, I thought I'd try, the, try putting the turret onto the hull. And what I found was when it went down, I couldn't turn it. So what I've done, I doubt if you'll be able to see it. What I've done, I've come in with a knife and I've just put a chamfer on the edges of these, these tangs that stick out. Just put a 45 degree, just scraped it on there, just to chamfer to let it lead around and it makes it go down, makes it go around a lot easier. I couldn't turn it at all before. So as you can see now, it's still quite stiff-ish. And you can see, because it's painted black, you can see where it's rubbing. And these little, these little areas here, I'm pointing out, they're actually angled up. So what we can do is take a sanding stick and just remove some plastic from the top of them just like so so that's done and it will make it a lot smoother a lot easier to turn so I, mean, I don't want to play with it but I just don't want to be breaking it every time I try and move it so there we are so that's that's a lot better we can still sand more off of there if we need to but uh, I don't think we do you can see on there where it's rubbing that single contact area so uh, I think the other thing I'm going to do is just put a chamfer on the edges of these holes because I don't know if you noticed then as I was turning it they were catching on those lugs and sort of causing it to sort of do, do, do. so let's see if that's made things a little easier 
drop it in like that. There we go. It's a lot smoother now. So there we are. Right. Now we can look at getting this together. So we've got this the gun mount going in. We're not supposed to glue that. And then we're going to glue the base on. So that's going to go into there and it's going that way up. These pointy bits on the side face towards the top of the turret. And that'll stop the gun dropping down horizontal. I'm hoping. Hmm. I'm actually beginning to think I'm not going to put this on the back of the Scammel because it's such a beautiful model on its own. Um, I have actually got a, a Chally one that I can put on the back of the Scammel. But I'm not sure. As I said, I'm looking in my books that Phil sent me. Thank you, Phil. And it says in there that they transported them around on trains. There's no mention of any tank transporters. Got a sprue nib there that I've left on. So I'm just going to get rid of that with my Infini glass file. There we go. There we are. So that's going to go on like that, and that all fits lovely. Right, so we'll put this piece in. Pointy bits facing up, or down in this case, but towards the top of the turret, should I say. So there we are. So that's all good. So we'll grab our Tamiya Extra Thin, run some into these corners here. So I'm going to get some cement into there. Can't even the fit is so good I can't even see where the joint is there on that weld line. It's on the outer edge. So we'll get some run down there. The cast texture on here is gorgeous. The weld lines are gorgeous. The whole bloody kit is gorgeous. I've actually written to Meng and congratulated them on this. Because the last thing I do like about Meng, if you email them. They respond. They don't ignore you like a lot of other companies mentioning no names. So I'm going to see if I can get a clamp to go on there and stay on there. These are my Rebel Hobby clamps from Sweden, which I get asked every time I show them. go so that can hold that together right and then the front get some cement into there and a drop into there not quite sure how we're going to clamp that so I don't think there's any way of clamping that at all and then we'll get some round here A nice strong joint going on here. There we go. So we'll leave that to dry. There's nothing to glue there because with the armour going on. Some more in there so we can get a sort of nice strong joint in there because that's holding that pivot in. I think that's all going to be covered up anyway, that, that area there. So there we go. We can get a couple of pegs. We can peg that there. Another peg and peg that there. And that's that all. Held together and glued together, lovely. I'm not gluing across there because obviously there's a panel to go in. It looks like when you squeeze that together, it looks like it goes out of square. So there we are. Our gun's all free to move. So I'm going to leave that for a few hours to dry. 
and I'm not sure how long this has been. I don't think this has been long enough yet, has it? You haven't had enough torture yet. So we'll come back when that's dry and see what we can do next. I'm just looking in the instructions. This is literally 30 seconds after I turn the camera off. Um, I think we'll go on and build up this big searchlight. Uh, build up the, bo the, the main box of that. We won't put any of this detail in yet. But we'll just build up the main box and then decide what we're going to do. Have it open or closed or what. But um, I think that's all we can get on with. So I'll get the parts off the sprue and then we'll see how it goes together, yeah? Okay, so here's the parts off the sprues all cleaned up. And as you can see by the instructions, it all goes together nicely. And they're telling us to paint that piece there. And I'm guessing this piece here in 001, which I believe is matte black. Yes, MC001 is matte black. So, and inside there is going to be 502, which I believe is silver. 502 uh, indeed is silver. So yeah, we'll uh, we're not put, I'm not doing any of this. I'm not putting these these bits in here. I'm just building up the main box so that we can look at the seams and everything. So. Um, very well engineered. That's gonna. That's got a tab on there and a socket in there. We've got a tab in there and a socket in there. So you can't actually put it together wrong. It only goes together one way, and it fits very strange. It looks. A bit, it looks off. It looks like on here you can see it fits. It doesn't fit flush with that edge. So that's that. And I'm just going to take a bit more of that sprue nib away. There we go. And then we can do is use the file. If it polishes one area, you know you've got a high spot. So there we go. That's that done. Right. So that's going to go together like that. Beautiful. There we are. Whoops. That's tacked together there. If you can hear some knocking in the background, it's quite windy today. And the, uh, the sort of vent things in the bathroom walls, they have a, a flap in them, I guess, to stop things flying in. And they just knock around a bit in the wind. So that's that on. So that's that way round like that. And then this piece is going to go in the front. And that fits lovely it's going to need some seam work actually but um we'll have to look in our references and see in fact i'm going to clamp all this together and then glue it so we don't get glue oozing everywhere because it may be that i want to leave those lines in there because they're doors so i'm going to get a peg on here and make sure the peg is nowhere near the glued edge Peg on there, like a so. Way. Okay, so that's all clamped together, and then we can get some cement in there. Make sure we don't capillary onto that peg. some in there get some in there just let it capillary around and this is the thing guys if you are new to the hobby if you glue and then clamp what you will find is the glue will ooze out which is great if you want a weld seam or something but if you don't which I don't want here because there are no welds on here as far as I know um, I don't want any glue oozing out, so what I'm doing is clamping it first and then just dropping the glue in there and let it capillary around. Just like so. And there we go. And again, we can leave that to dry. Alright, so that's the box together. We'll just wait for that to dry. Just looking forward in the instructions for what else we can do. And I've noticed there's this rear plate going on. Um, and there's nothing that's going to cause a problem if I fit that now. So we can get that on now and get that glued in and that'll make the turret nice and solid and strong then. So that fits in there. As you can see, it's a lovely, lovely fit. Now, I'm not sure if it's supposed to go in 
you can see it's gone in here and the sides are actually protruding. I'm not sure it's supposed to go in flush with the sides or if it's supposed to go in sitting in. I can see there it's supposed to go in sitting in. There's a big box going on the back anyway. So we'll get this in and then we can get that all clamped up and glued up. So I'm going to get a peg on here. There we go, we've got a peg on there. And we've got a peg on there. So that'll keep that all closed up. Right. Get some cement down in there. Get some cement down in there. And then across here. There we are, that's that all glued in. So another piece of the puzzle has gone into place. And we've got some raised ejection pin marks on there, which I missed. There's my mum sending me a text, I expect, or it'll be Domino's. Because it's Friday, it'll be Domino's or Pizza Hut. They always send me texts on a Friday, trying to get me to spend my money with them. No, back, <clears throat> all dry. I've gone around with some black super glue, filled in the gaps, the sand and everything. Don't really need to do that because it's never going to be seen, but I just thought I would. And I also, I don't think you'll be able to see down in there, but I've also got in there with a piece of bent rod and put some super glue on the inside just to back up those joints. So that's all good. So the next step on the turret is to fit the um, the gun mantlet and turret armour. So here we've got the mantlet and the um, the sight going on, and they've both got a bag around them, and the bag is made of this sort of floppy vinyl material. And I've been having a little play with what will glue it and what won't. It seems like the black super glue doesn't glue it for some reason. It's very strange. But the this stuff, the ASK thin, does. Don't ask me. So anyway, what I'm going to do is use the because it's the this is unaffected by um, cements. In fact, I'll use the quick setting. So we'll just use this to degrease it, just to make sure we get a good joint. And then also on the back of this part here, as I say, the extra thin doesn't affect it at all. So it's just going to basically degrease it to make sure we get a good um, a good joint. So this one's this is L1. And that's going to go with the hole at the bottom. So I'm just going to put a drop of clear super glue on here. Don't worry, it's black because the um, there's black super glue on the end of the applicator. And then get this lined up in position. Just press it down. And hopefully it'll stay there. And then this one here, I think what I'll do is put some super glue. I'm not sure you need to glue this really, to be honest. I think the barrel will hold it in, but I just want to make sure I get a good joint so that I don't have any cracking paint in there or anything. I don't even know how we're going to paint this stuff. I don't really know why they do it. I guess it's because it's easier to mould it accurately, isn't it? With the softer material. There we go, right. So now that can go <clears throat> onto there like so. And there we are, just get grab a cotton bud, wipe away any excess. Of course it's uh, it's the thin, so it doesn't wipe away like the black stuff does. Just gently remove that excess of glue right there. It looks a bit better. Not that you're going to see any of it, I don't think. So that's glued in place now. That one's glued in place. So you've got this little sight to go in. It has no end detail on it at all, which is weird. I would have thought we would have had a an end on it or something. So we just dip that in the super glue and then pop that 
in there like so it needs to be kind of parallel to the gun so we've got the barrel here let's have a look it's that way up and that's just broken off why do they use these vinyl parts They're such a pain in the ass make sure it's about the same angle as the gun so that's cool Yeah, that's broken away. So maybe the super glue doesn't stick it at all. I don't know. I don't know why they have to use these bloody vinyl parts. They're a pain in the ass. You get mold scenes on that are now impossible to remove. There's nothing that will stick them. Plonk that in there again. It only needs to just hold it in place. It doesn't need to be under any load or anything. But, um, I guess they use them because obviously you can you can have shapes returning on themselves and they'll pull out of the mould because it's soft. I guess that's why they use them. I've done this test here. As you can see that hasn't really glued very well at all. So it's all just going to fall off. It's a pathetic, stupid idea. It's absolutely pathetic. Maybe I'll put some extra thin in there. And maybe the extra thin will cause the plastic to melt and that will kind of, I don't know. I suppose the best way to do it would be to pin it. But, uh, I don't know. If any of you know how to glue these pathetic parts on, then let me know in the uh, comments. But I can see the barrel's going to hold that one. I'm not worried, but it's this one here is going to probably just fall off. I'm tempted to maybe drill it and pin it. Perhaps take that piece out of there. You can see it's not sticking at all. What I think I'm going to do is measure the diameter of that, drill through, and then replace that with a piece of rod, and that'll actually pin it in place. So I'll come back when I've done that. The piece that came out is about 1.4 mil diameter, and I only had 1.5 mil brass. So what I've done is I've cut the end off a new piece of 1.5 mil brass rod. So you've got a nice flat square end on there and I'm just gonna make sure it is flat there we go so that's gonna be a nice sharp end on there um, and what I've done is drilled through this piece of vinyl and then drilled into the the turret and I've removed there's a square lump on the turret this sits on I've removed that lump so that it sits nice and flush okay because the lump sort of wants to push it away and then what we can do here, I'm not really worried how it looks from the side because the armour goes over it. We're not really going to see it from the side. We need some more super glue. Drop that in there. And then I'm going to remove this excess glue from here because it's a you know, horrible, messy ball. Let's just do that. And that's how you clean a glue looper and then just wipe it off in a cloth and it's back to like new. Well, it's not like new again, it looks horrible, but it's, it's clean. It's the same shape as it was when it was new. So we can grab some of this extra thin, well, this uh, clear thin super glue and run that around the sides just to try and sort of blend the vinyl in somehow. I don't know. And then we can come inside. And put some super glue into that joint. And that will lock that brass pin in nice and solid. I think I've pushed the brass pin in too far, haven't I? I should have bloody looked before I glued it. Oh no, it's about right. Maybe come out of touch if it will. Get something behind it just to push it without. Making a hole in my finger. Now it's glued in solid. That'll have to do. Right, so that's it. That's in. That's in like that. Right, so that's that done. Just get some more glue around the edge. And there we are. And the next thing we have to do 
is fit the armor. This is the steel blue armor, which is E5. I'm going to cut this one off of here. And I need to get in here and remove these sprue connection points. So there's one there, and there's one there. We'll come in with a round blade, just remove that. And this one here, and I'm showing you this for a reason because as you can see, we are removing sprue nibs from an area where there's cast texture. And there's also a mold seam around the sides. So there is a mold seam there. We've got a weld there by the look of it, so be careful not to lose that, or it might be a, no, it is a weld, I thought it was a cable, it's a weld. And then that mold seam carries on, and it's here as well. There we go. And there we are, right. And there we go. And then we come along with our extra thin, brush it on where we've been sanding. And as you can see, it will take away any smooth lines we've left behind from the sanding. There you are. Is our steel brew armor ready to go on? Oh, we've got a sprue nib there as well, got to get rid of. Sand that one out. And we'll sand that one out. And apparently this is where it joins in with the rest of the turret. So that's going to go down there like that. It's catching on that confounded bloody piece of effing vinyl. Oh, God. Yeah, I know, there's my neighbour's dog barking at you now, it's so bad. What I'll do is lift the back of that vinyl up, get this to go, there we go. As I say, it doesn't matter what it looks like from the side because you can't see it. But there we go, that's on like that now. Now I'm not sure, I need to check my references, how this joint here looks. I'm not sure if that's got to be filled and then recast or what, I don't know. But um, you can see that fits on there rather nicely and you can also see that this seam here is exposed on the front of the turret, so I'm going to have to go on and fill that as well. So um, I'll get that done and then I'll be back and I'll find out what we're doing about that. Okay, um, <clears throat> all done. I've actually trimmed a tiny little bit of black that vinyl away at the back to make it go in easier. I've done the references, the actual, this well, this joint here is just a joint. So I've got a feeling this is part of the original turret and this is the weld seam where it joined on. So I'm quite happy the way Meng have done this actually because it's easier to repair that and make that look constant than have a, you know, to, than to actually do the weld seam. So that's good news. So to put this in, we're going to have to put that, push that piece of vinyl forward and just Press this down behind it like that, and then we can press the vinyl down. Um, and because this here is exposed, I want to give it a, a cast texture. So I'll get my extra thin again and just wet the area, wet the area that's exposed. So I'm sure this is part of the original turret because the turret did come down, didn't it? Like a like into a point. As you can see there, you just use the extra thin just to get the surface roughened up. And there's our cast. There's our cast look to it.
there we go and you could just keep going if you want to just keep going it'll get more and more pronounced as long as it's got a rough finish rather than the rather than the smooth plastic there's also a bit around here I think we're gonna to have to do because I think that should be cast there as well but we'll see so when this goes on My tweezers behind there, pull that vinyl forward, clip that down in, and then just push the vinyl down, and that's it, that's in. And that's going to go down like that. Now we can see that we've got a bit of a step here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a step. I want it to remain. It's, it's nice this side. On this side, there's a step. It's not going fully down for some reason. There's something stopping it going down. quite know what it is. It's also stopping it going back and it looks like it's here. So I think we'll just remove some plastic from there. We'll have to do this in stages I think. And if it's a moulding issue then you'll have the same problem with yours so look carefully at what I'm doing here. better already. I'm just going to take something away from that edge. There. I should have fitted this before I fitted the vinyl, shouldn't I? That would have made life a lot easier. Okay, take a bit more away from here, just a touch. If we get a gap, we can always get some Mr. Surfacer in there, it's not a problem. Vinyl out of the way. Go on, get out the bloody way, you crap. Do, 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 do. Okay, so it's still not going fully back. And we also have this step. I need to look at this. I'll come back and tell you what I've done when I've done it rather than have you just watch me experiment. So, right, what I've done, I've cut some material away from this area here inside there. Not much, just a few little slithers, just cut some away. I've cut some away from that bottom lip there, okay, that corner. I've scraped some plastic from the inside of here, okay. I've scraped, sanded some plastic away from here, and I've also sanded here and here. This, uh, this, this angle I've brought it back a bit to make it a bit of a better angle and now we've got a much nicer fit. As you can see it's, it's more flush and it's going back in nicer so it's less of a horrible seam to deal with. Something stopping it going on the bottom. I wonder if it's that little lump there. It's like a lump there. I'm going to remove that and see if that helps it to go back in a bit better. There's definitely something awry here. And I'm hoping it's not... I'm hoping it's something I've found which is common. There we go, that's much better. There we go, that's improved it even more. So that's a lovely fit in there now. So what I'm going to do is somehow clamp that in there. Clamp that down there if a peg will do it. Yes it will. A 
that is all good. Right. I've got a feeling this would have been a weld joint, you know. Because the the the, the chieftain turret sort of, sort of went like that, didn't it? It went down like that. It wouldn't have it wouldn't have carried out on that angle there. And then gone down. So I'll have to have a look. But I must be honest, Phil, if you're watching, these books you sent me have been an absolute godsend with this build. You know, it's just I ask a question to myself, how's that going to go in there? And the answer is in those books. Absolutely brilliant they are. For some reason I'm not getting any glue on the brush. There we go, got some on there now. I get plenty of glue in these seams. And I, before someone tells me, I know about the thing about pulling the, the brush out on Tamiya. I want to make sure these joints are really well glued and solid. I'm going to have to check my references again and look, because I reckon that is a weld seam there. And there we are, that's all glued on. with that. Lovely. So once again we can leave it to dry but what we can do now is we can have a look at our references together and see what we think. We need to try and get a better close-up picture of the turret top. You can't really see it in there. There's a picture of the turret top there, but you can't really see if there's a weld there or not. Um, I would imagine. I would imagine there would be because I can't see why. Yeah, there must be because you've got that step there that's coming up. So it must be a weld joint there. It must be a weld joint. Um, if it wasn't, I can't see why why um, Main wouldn't have just moulded that as one and then had the joint there on that weld joint. Here we go. So we can see here. Yes, there is a weld joint there. You can see it's been ground. Um, I'm just looking here, that's looking at, that's looking there isn't it? Yeah, so there's that cutout in the side there. So you can see where it's welded on here. Now that's coming further back, yes yeah, so that's that, that's that cutout there. So there's the weld joint there and you can see a weld joint there. So we will give it a little subtle weld joint. In fact, I can't really see the weld joint they've put in here. They are very subtle. So um, there's another little job we can do there with some nice stretch sprue. We'll, uh, we'll make another weld joint in there. I'll also have a look at the references and see what that is there. See if that's a weld joint. I'm sure it is. And then what we can do is just have some fun and make some weld joints. I'm going to get plenty of glue in there to get nice and wet, let that dry and then when we come back in part seven I will show you how I do a weld joint. See you then, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you've liked the video, hit the thumbs down if you haven't and if you haven't already subscribed click on that little box there and also hit the notifications bell you'll get notifications of all my videos and I do put out pretty much every day so there we go. Thank you for watching guys, hope you've enjoyed this and uh, any questions or anything just ask them in the comments down below. Bye.